Professor Ron, what would a forensic photographer do upon entering a crime scene? Document everything. Um, this is one of my favorite topics. First off, and I'm going to have to look at you for this, when you have a camera, you see on TV they hold it straight ahead. We don't do that in forensics. We hold the light off to the side so it bounces this way. Angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. I'll get out of your face now. Um, that's one of the things that gets me. I understand it's, it's you know, if they, a flash bulb lights off, it's going to bounce. Holding something sideways is not pointing towards the camera. I, I get that. But in real forensics, we, we bounce sideways. Otherwise, the light will just bounce straight back. Angle of incidence equals angle of re reflection, really, but, but refraction. Um, something else that I would, I would say about forensic photographers that I was trained as is shoot everything twice. Three times if you can. And now with digital, you can. If you were originally, if you remember, cam you know, cameras carrying, you know, 35 pictures, if you're going to film 10, 10 uh, rolls, then shoot 15. You only get one chance. You only have so many, so, so, so a limited amount of time to capture everything. And a good example, the OJ trial. There was a image that the cameraman captured or the photographer captured in the bathroom there were some at the day of you know the actual crime or the crime scene analysis there were boxes of swiss army knives that were like six inches long or something like that they never saw those boxes nor found those knives they only have the pictures to go on so they couldn't move any further but in the investigation it came up they didn't go anywhere with it in court. I mean, they tried, but they couldn't go anywhere because all they had were, were was the image. Had he found, oh, there's boxes of image stuff, you have to look. You can't just take pictures and go, oh, great, 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 great. What are you shooting? What are you taking images of? So you have to look at your surroundings. You're cataloging the entire thing. Now, I don't mean take a picture and write it down. I, um, we have what's what I'm looking for, scales that we would put down so that you can know, okay, you know, here's, here's, here's a, a ruler that, so you can know that this gun casing was three inches long as compared to one that's, you know, an inch and a half or something like that. So we have scales and, and you, you put them down, you take your picture, you pick it up, you go somewhere else. Um, let's see, what else would I do as a photographer? D so document everything, document everything, document everything. And you're not touching anything, right? No. Because that's the medical examiner. No, the medical examiner is for the body. The body, okay. The decedent. The decedent, excuse me, okay. Yes. So, but then this forensic uh, photographer is not touching anything, not moving anything. It's capturing the images as they are at this. Well, it's a conundrum, which could come in handy in variety. If you find stuff before the ME gets there, the medical examiner, take your pictures, document everything. Then go through the house or the crime scene again after the ME has removed the body and take pictures because you may have to lift something up. There may be an inscription or something. There may be blood. There may be a bullet. There may be something hidden. You know, maybe it was an organized offender and they have an MO and they, they're leaving their calling card and you don't find it because you didn't move things. So yes, you do want to move things, but not before the ME moves the body. That's only if there's a body. There's plenty of crimes, you know, uh, assault, not assault, by that, that's humans. Um, burglary, um, breaking and entry, uh, home invasion robberies, uh, all sorts of stuff where there are no people involved. And there's plenty of crime. Breaking into a jewelry store, I remember one in Beverly Hills, I was trying to get down Wilshire. Um, and, you know, they, they just document, my, my friend ended up documenting everything. And they were there all night documenting all the jewelry because if they were missing a piece, the photographs would reveal that. So what are some of the things that a forensic photographer is taking pictures of? Doorknobs, forced entry? Yes. We, we look at uh, um, potential prints. I mean, we talked about uh, fingerprints earlier. They can take pic pictures of the prints too. Um, you don't have to just lift them and, and, um, and, and get rid of them. You can also take pictures of, particularly if you use the fluorescence uh, techniques, you will use lighting. Um, luminol, or, I don't know if you're familiar with luminol, but blood that has been washed away, so you think,
can be developed because of the proteins left behind in the in the say it's in the wall if there was blood blood spatter on the wall and people washed it down peroxide gets bled out very nicely but it leaves the fatty deposits behind so you may have washed it down but you can use luminol to redevelop the, the walls take pictures of it because luminol will degrade over time and disappear of course because it's it's just it makes everything luminous um, we use various Oh, okay, here's one, here's a good one. We use various colors uh, in UV lights, uh, alternating light systems, to develop different pictures and be able to see things. You can see written, handwritten articles on a piece of paper where they writ had written on a piece of paper above it and the paper's gone now. Using a different light source and with the right colored lens, and you can also see them with, with goggles too and, and the right light source, they have to be matched, if you will, you know, 100 micrograms and 100 micrograms equals red, whatever. But you can make, you can see these things. You can photograph all of this stuff. They did that in, oh, I can't remember if it was Red Dragon. Yeah, it was Red Dragon. Again, my favorite movie, sorry. But they have great forensics in that one. Um, when they're examining the toilet paper from the crime scene and he had blocked out, blacked out, I should say, the the address of, uh, of Will Graham. They took, they got everything squished down and then used alternating light source to make the pen that was underneath the blackout come to the top, if you will, and then take photographs of it. And then they had to put it back and get it back in, his, in, in Hannibal Lecter's cell. Um, so, I mean, that, that's, that's documented. So there's so many things that a good or even a bad forensic uh, photographer can do, but the biggest thing is document everything. But we have t tips and techniques to do things. I'll leave you with this one. Painting with light, my favorite technique. You leave your camera aperture open. Generally you do, do this with two people. You, you, you cover it and you say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna light it up now. They uncover it and then you either shoot off your flash or your strobe, or you can take one of those big sun sunlights and literally paint with light. And because you're leaving the aperture open, it's, and we're talking like pitch black stuff, you can get a picture of a house, which I've done. You can, you can actually get a picture of a house by painting with light. It's a fantastic technique. I highly, look, highly recommend that people look into that.